In this video, we're talking about how to find the surface area to volume ratio of some right rectangular prisms. And remember that when we talk about a right rectangular prism, what we're talking about is a three-dimensional figure where all sides of the figure are rectangles and the corners of each figure are 90 degree angles. So for example, if we drew a picture like this one where the front side was a square, so something like this, so this is the front side, and then if we add dimension to it, we have something like this, right, coming off the back here, and we connect those points, those lines, and then we have this line coming down to be parallel, and then this line coming back to be parallel here to the top. And what we could do is go ahead and draw in the back side. We could make it hollow here, something like this, and what we would have is this three-dimensional right rectangular prism. So if you look at each side, you look at the front side here, it looks like it's almost a square, but we could call it a rectangle. The right-hand side over here, it's also a rectangle. If we look at this left-hand side, it's a rectangle. The back side is congruent to the front side here. The bottom and the top are rectangles. So this is a right rectangular prism. All of the faces of it are rectangles. And at each corner, we have 90-degree angles. What we could do then is label all the sides of the prism and say that this represents the width, this represents the length, and this represents the height of the prism. So then if we want to find the volume of this figure, we would just multiply length by width by height, right? We want to find volume, it's length times width times height. If we want to find the surface area, the formula is a little bit more complicated, but what we need to realize is that the front surface is congruent to the back surface. So in order to find the area of the front surface, we would just multiply width by height, and then if we multiply that value by 2, that accounts for the front and the back. So here's 2 times the width times the height. If we want to find the surface area of the bottom, we multiply the width by the length, so W times L, and if we want to account for the top and the bottom, which are congruent, we would just say 2WL, so here's our 2LW right here. And then the left and right hand sides, to find the area of those, we would take length times height, or LH, and if we double that, then we account for the left and right hand side. So here's our 2LH. So this is the surface area and the volume for a figure like this one. What we're going to do in this video is find the surface area to volume ratio. The surface area to volume ratio is going to be the surface area S divided by the volume V. So in order to find this ratio, we'll need to find surface area and volume, and then we'll divide surface area by volume. So let's go ahead and look at a couple examples. The first one we're going to do is a cube with volume 64 cubic units. So first of all, we've been told that it's a cube. And when it's a cube, that means that length is equal to width, which is equal to height. In other words, length and width and height are all equal. The dimensions are all the same. So if that's the case, we could adapt these formulas for a cube specifically. If length equals width equals height, we could use any one of these variables to represent the other two, and we could make some substitutions. So let's say, for example, we're going to use w. The volume of a cube then becomes w times w times w, since all three of these are equal, or in other words, w cubed. The surface area of a cube is going to become 2 times w times w, or 2w squared, plus 2 times w times w, so plus 2w squared, plus 2w squared, or if I add all those together, 6w squared. So these top formulas are going to be for a rectangular prism. These formulas are going to be for a cube. And in this case, we've been told that we have the cube with volume 64 cubic units. So if we plug in 64 for volume, 64 is equal to w cubed, right? Because this is the formula for the volume of a cube. Volume equals w cubed. So we get 64 equals w cubed. And if we take the cube root of both sides, we're going to get w is equal to the cube root of 64, which is going to be 4, because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So I can say w is equal to 4, which means that 4 is also going to be the length, which is also going to be the height, because we're talking about a cube. So we're dealing with a cube that's 4 units by 4 units by 4 units. So we want to find the surface area to volume ratio. Well, the surface area is just going to be 6w squared. So surface area is going to be 6 times 4 squared, or 6 times 16, or 
96 square units or units squared. The volume we already know is 64 cubic units, so the volume is going to be 64 cubic units or units cubed. So now if I want to find the surface area to volume ratio, I just want to take surface area, so 96, and I want to divide that by the volume, so 64. Well, when I simplify this fraction, I could divide both the numerator and the denominator by 4. If I divide the numerator by 4, I'm going to get 2 and 4. I'm going to get 24. If I divide the denominator by 4, I'm going to get 16. So then I could go ahead and divide both the numerator and denominator by 8. 24 divided by 8 is 3. 16 divided by 8 is 2. So I get 3 halves or 1.5 and I can go ahead and say units. So what I can say then is that the surface area to volume ratio of this cube is 3 to 2 or 1.5 units. What about if I'm dealing with a rectangular prism so the width, the length, and the height are not all equal. In this case the dimensions are n by n by 1. In that case, I can plug my dimensions into my volume formula here, and I can say volume is equal to n times n times 1. It doesn't matter which variable, length, width, or height, I assign to which dimension, n, n, or 1. I'm always going to get the same result. So volume is going to be length times width times height, or n times n times 1. So I'm going to say volume is going to be equal to n squared. To find the surface area of this rectangular prism, I can plug into this formula here for surface area and say surface area is going to be 2 times, in this case we have to be a little careful because we have to remember to multiply everything correctly, so we'll go ahead and say length, width, and height. So when we are looking for 2LW, L is N and W is N plus 2LH, so 2L is N and H is 1, plus 2WH, so W is N and H is 1. So when I simplify here, I'm going to get 2N squared, plus this is 2 times 1, so I have just 2N, and this is 2 times 1, so again I'm going to have plus 2n, and I can simplify to 2n squared plus 4n. So that's going to be my surface area. Now in terms of surface area to volume ratio, I'm going to say surface area to volume ratio is going to be equal to, again I take my surface area and put it in the numerator, so 2n squared plus 4n, and then I divide by the volume which I'll put in the denominator. Now the first thing I can do is cancel an n from each term, so this n is going to go away. This is instead of n squared just going to become n, this will just become n. So what I'm left with is 2n plus 4 all divided by n. I could leave it as one fraction or I could separate it into two fractions and say 2n over n plus 4 over n. And in that case 2n over n I'll get the n's to cancel and I'll just get 2. 4n I can't simplify so I'll get 2 plus 4 over n. And I could go ahead and say units and this would be my surface area to volume ratio. So whether you're dealing with a cubic prism or a rectangular prism, this is how you're going to find the surface area to volume ratio.